Yeah, in a, in a lot of ways, it's really the father of the sportster. I'm Dal McLeod. And I'm Sean McLeod. The 1952 Harley K model, I guess uh, that came about, my, my dad bought that as a project back in the late 80s. And he started collecting pieces and parts for it here and there. It was missing a few things, not totally a lot. Um, time rolled on in 1997. My, my son was born and I phoned my dad, tell him he's a grandfather now, and said, well, I guess he needs a new Harley. And he gave us the, gave Dal and the K model. And, and it was simply my job just to put the, put the thing together. In 1997, Dallin was born, and then seven days before his second birthday, Dallin was diagnosed with ALL, uh, acute lymphomic leukemia, and uh, that really turned our world upside down. Yeah, I really uh, put a pause on all the bike stuff, as, especially as far as the expensive ones go. So. And the K yeah. model was essentially packed up and just put to the side for the time being. We, you know, we sold off our other bikes and yeah. we just concentrated on him getting healthy. And then with a suppressed immune system, it really wasn't until his teens where he started to really come about and be, have more of a normal life again without worries or anything to worry about. So um, when he was about 12 or 13, we, he, he was old enough to gain an interest. He was riding a mini bike at that point. Yep. And uh, so we kind of tackled it together and, and uh, it was like a father-son project, I guess you could say, and bonding. Dullum helped me considerably. He was cleaning parts, helping sand, refinish. Um, you know, yeah, mostly the smaller stuff, up. obviously. I wasn't, at that point, as knowledgeable about any of the technical well, sides. Whether, so. you're, whether you're handing me a wrench or yeah. you're adjusting a valve, it's all the help is help, and it was all a, a team effort. Yeah. 1952 Harley K model. First year for the street bikes to have a telescopic front end. A new design for Harley over the big twins all still carried the Springers into the later on in the 50s. 52 Harley Davidson introduced this this new front end with, with the Harley K model. This was the first real 45 cubic inch street bike that did acquire this front end. It was a test for Harley. Um, seven inch big headlight with the oil and generator lights were built right into them. That was for a two year only period. Until 54 they, they went with a different design. In 52 was also the introduction of the rear shock swing arm design, still not found on the big twins till later into, into the later 50s, which greatly increased passenger and rider comfort in uh, long journeys and offered a bit of relief for suspension wise. Opposed to that, everything else remained um, rigid frames up until mid, mid 50s and then they started to adapt them on the big twins as well. This was the testing ground for the rear shock absorbers and the front shocks as well. And, and the same design carried on well into the 90s with, with the Sportster brand and greatly remained unchanged from this initial design in 52. You know, the usual seven inch round air cleaner cover is, uh, was the stock design as well. The M53 racing bombsite carburetor has an actual bomb site venturi inside of it. It looks like the crosshairs of an old, an old uh, machine gun. The choke, choke plates up the front. Fully closed to start and prime the bike. Open it up a notch when you go to start the bike, and then fully open. Same kind of design as today. Any of the new motorcycles, but Linkard's been around for for a long time. And then. After a minute or two of warming up, you fully open up the choke and you're good to go. Harley introduced the trumpet horn on this model, uh, similar to the big twins and the pan heads had a similar style trumpet, but this was the, the original six volt trumpet style that came with the bike in 52. A nice little upgrade that would enable the, you to be heard a little bit more when you, when you laid on the six volt horn. Toolbox cover also housed the battery inside in the back and also gave you a little options for carrying a few of the tool, the tool pouch. So for your ignition, you got your ignition on the right, you got two key switches. So you can you can run without the lights, so you can have the lightings on the other side. Oh, that just fell off. Uh, there's a parking light and then your full running lights. Uh, in the middle, you got your abbreviated Harley speedometer, and then just below that would be your steering dampener rod, where you can adjust your steering damp dampener tension as you as you desired. As you went down, maybe a straight stretch, you just want to 
stiffen it up and take a little relax your arms a bit or into the corners you want to loosen her back off a little bit. Uh, back in the 52 the distributors on the motorcycles were all manual so you had to manually advance and retard the distributor for, for starting and for extra power going up a hill. If you started knocking you had to actually manually use the hand control to move the distributor to give you a bit more power to get up the hill and then you can move it back a little bit after to retard it slightly. The Harley 45 cubic inch side valve design, um, you pretty much had to loosen off the valve covers. There's a locking nut, you loosen that off, the lower cover will slide up over the inner cover. There are seals inside that would access the locking nut for the bottom of the tappet from the, from the tappets and, and operated by the cams inside and then there would be a uh, valve adjustment shim you would put in here uh, to adjust your valve clearances uh, something you would have to do uh, at least once a year on a regular maintenance uh, program when we first got the bike it, it didn't it did need a lot of work it was in baskets uh, the frame was bare it was totally disassembled it was missing some transmission pieces the engine cases were in bad shape there was two previous repairs around the main and counter shaft areas and the lower end, which is typically where they all blew out if they were going to blow. Um, two different styles and talents of welders uh, tried to fix it in the past. I actually had to end up replacing those cases with another very nice set of, of uh, later cases, still 52, but they were about 200 numbers off on the serial number from where we started. So essentially the same, and I picked those up out of California quite difficult to track these things down piece by piece and especially back before the internet was kind of uh, involved uh, you had to know somebody who knew a guy that had a brother that had a K model and you think he had a tail light hanging on the wall and it, you know the whole process took time to track every little nut and bolt down but uh, we kept her fairly correct and original uh, right down to the fasteners and the finishes and um, the only thing we really changed up was we uh, it's the Harley K model seat pan but it's got a white uh, leather covering instead of the it was supposed to be black but bad took that some way. liberties yeah uh, the color of it is uh, real blue it was a factory color for 1952 uh, they offered the black Persian red real blue uh, there was an optional metallic bronze Bronco bronze color and white was also available and when uh, we stripped the fenders down Dallin and I stripped the fenders there was uh, the bike originally was the metallic Bronco bronze, but we just could not bring ourselves. <laughs> Neither one of us really liked the color, and it just reminded us of bad things. So we just down and picked out the real blue of the, the ones that were available, yep. and we stuck with that to keep it authentic. They, they really only made about 1,500 in 52 of the K models. Um, in, in 53, they also made around the same number, slightly more. And then in 54, the engine design changed the the CCs also increased slightly and pretty much it's not really interchangeable with the 52 or 3 so they and there's no aftermarket parts available there was no service manual available for the any of the K series bikes all you had to work with was a parts book that was basically it and tips from the older fellows it's all oral history and uh, things passed on basically uh, right now it's uh, 547. Um, Harley started the serial numbers at 1000 back in the 50s. So the first bike would have been technically 1000 or 1001. It's not clear on if they made a number a zero or not. But technically right now with the replacement cases it would have been the 547th K model to roll off the line in 52. The original cases were uh, 224. So it was an earlier model. The process really dragged out over the years. Uh, it was in a mocked up state while I basically collected parts to get to the stage where I'd be ready for the engine to be rebuilt specifically. Um, so I concentrated on the chassis, pretty much had it narrowed down in the first five years, I think. Uh, I had to replace uh, fork tubes, things like that. We I actually mem remember making a few trips down to Hamilton with them one time, the Pools Harley-Davidson, and we he was able to pick up some of the engine components and bearings and cages and things like that and shims and but it wasn't until about 20 years later when I actually with the help of Lloyd God at uh, mostly Ironheads and Alora um, we discovered that most of it was incorrect as it was for a 54 and later style 900 cc engine as opposed to the 
52 was a 750 side valve, 45 cubic inch motorcycle. So really I had to really track each shim, bearing cage down, part number by part number across the planet. So with under 3000 K models ever built, uh, tracking the parts down, they, they came from all sides of the planet. Like the, it wasn't just Ontario, Canada or North America, but you know, from Europe and Australia and Poland and everywhere. I think the biggest challenge mostly was the the parts uh, unavailable, hard to find, tracking down. It, nobody has anything on the shelf really for 52 or 3. Um, the other part of the challenge I guess would have been there was no service manual made for the bike so everything you did you kind of had to do off of uh, looking at a parts book and assumptions and some pictures and reference factory photos but uh, luckily for us Majesto in the 80s started making motorcycle models and we had this little reference motorcycle I guess you could say and that's kind of what we used to it, it whenever we take it to a show we bring this and we sit it on the seat and uh, it's basically essentially the exact <laughs> same bike except for the, the seats black on this one as it's supposed to be but um, that's basically our uh, that was our model and our guide to build the bike by yeah just build it exactly like that but uh, it's several times bigger so in 52 with the K models and then 54 they turned to KH, KHA design and uh, there was also KR racers, uh, KRMs, desert racers, um, KKs and in 57 all these bikes kind of evolved into the Sportster and Harley unveiled the new Sportster design. It was more comfortable, it had a, a different top end, it was no longer a side valve. Uh, 45 900 cubic inch bike it, it had evolved into a 900 and it was uh, a model that didn't really evolve much it looked the same up until the 2000s when essentially the just this past year they announced they've uh, stopped the Sportster line and introduced a new Sportster S design which is a total different looking bike but it uh, it lasted a lot of years with essentially looking not very far off the original 52k model they still kind of look the same yeah and uh, in a lot of ways it's really the father of the sportster mm -hmm. how do you feel about that owning <laughs> it's it's cool having a little like piece of history like that where you can point to it and be like oh this turns into yeah. this bike five years from now but it's not quite the same there's all these subtle differences that you can People don't know what it is. Yeah. They, they, they think it maybe it's a sportster, but it's not. And it's just something that, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of them out there. And they, they evolved so quickly that uh, either you had a big twin or if you wanted to start out, then you probably started out in the K or the sportster. And sportster has been everybody's first Harley, I think, for since ever. You know, they always, you always start out in a small one and work your way up. But the K model really has uh, started a whole long lucrative business for Harley Davidson to help keep them afloat during some of the tougher times. An affordable motorcycle. Yeah.